June 30th, 1908, about a quarter after seven in the morning in rural Siberia in Russia. The sky was suddenly ripped open by a bluish white fireball as bright as the sun screaming by overhead. Without warning, the fiery orb detonated into a massive explosion. With a deafening boom, followed by what sounded like intense artillery fire as chunks of rock hailed from the air, it sent out immense shockwaves in every direction, knocking people off their feet, breaking glass for hundreds of miles, and remarkably, registering on barometers in England 3,500 miles away. The imagery of the sky ripping open is similar to how the Tunguska event was described by the few people who were actually around to bear witness. At the time, observers had no clue what had just happened. The only thing that was known for certain was that a fireball in the sky had just flattened over 850 square miles of trees. Fascinatingly, the trees near the epicenter of the explosion were still standing, though they were completely stripped of their bark and their branches. They just stood bare and limbless in the fallen remote forest. This is because the explosion was so swift and powerful, the force acting upon the branches didn't even have time to be transferred onto the trunks of the trees. Instead, they were just violently torn off in an instant. As the shock waves propagated further, they weakened enough to simply level the trees in an extreme demonstration of cataclysmic force. Dense clouds rose above the event's ground zero, so high into the atmosphere that they reflected the sun's light, allowing people as far away as China enough light to read newspapers outside at midnight that evening. So what actually happened? Incredibly, this event was not even investigated until 19 years later. Assuming the event was caused by a meteorite striking the Earth, a team led by Leonid Kulik, the chief curator for the meteorite collection of the St. Petersburg Museum, finally made the trek to the harsh and remote Siberian region in 1927. The scene of this event would have been awe-inspiring. More than 80 million trees wiped out in a circular area of about 850 square miles. But there was no crater or impact area at the explosion's epicenter. When questioned, the locals of the area were hesitant to share their first-hand experiences. They long believed this traumatizing event was the result of a curse put on the area by the god Ogdi. Eventually, however, Kulik was successful in getting them to provide their accounts. In addition to clearing out a massive area of forest, the blast ravaged animal populations in the area, including killing hundreds of reindeer. Fortunately, since it was such a sparsely populated area, there was not a high human death toll. Officially, no deaths have been confirmed, but up to three are thought to be possible. One eyewitness who was violently thrown from his chair when the explosion occurred is quoted as saying, The whole northern part of the sky appeared covered with fire. At that moment, there was a bang in the sky and a mighty crash. The crash was followed by a noise like stones falling from the sky or guns firing. The earth trembled. The object that covered the Siberian sky with fire that morning was, in fact, a meteorite. A 220 million pound rocky meteorite the size of a 25-story building barreling into the Earth's atmosphere at an insane estimated speed of about 60,000 miles per hour. While the details of the event are not known for certain, the most prominent theory as that this celestial body didn't actually strike the ground, but instead exploded when it came into contact with the thicker part of the Earth's lower atmosphere, about three to six miles above the surface, where it would have superheated the surrounding air to roughly 44,000 
500 degrees Fahrenheit before culminating in the massive explosion. This type of phenomenon is known as a meteor airburst. At a staggering 15 megatons, the magnitude of this explosion was absolutely tremendous. A megaton is measured as having equivalent explosive power to a million metric tons or well over 2 billion pounds of TNT. To put the magnitude of this explosion into perspective, it was a thousand times more powerful than the explosion caused by the atomic bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima in 1945 that tragically took the lives of more than 65,000 people 37 years after the Tunguska event. So, imagine if the Tunguska event occurred over somewhere like London, New York City, Paris, Tokyo, or Moscow. The loss of human life would have been terrible. Although it's designed for measuring the damage caused by bombings, the interactive resource Nuke Map can provide us some insight into the amount of damage that could be caused by a meteor airburst. If an airburst explosion were to occur of the same magnitude as the Tunguska event at a height of three miles above the surface in current day New York City, the estimated number of fatalities would be almost 200,000. This is what the overall blast area would look like compared to the same blast area equivalent to the Hiroshima bombing in 1945. It's frightening to think that this event could happen again, and to a much more populated area. Well, it actually did happen again, in Chelyabinsk Oblast, Russia, in 2013. This time, however, the meteorite was much smaller and exploded much higher up in the atmosphere about 18 miles above the ground, which significantly lessened the explosive impact. This was incredibly fortunate because the magnitude of the blast from this meteor was still about 500 kilotons, about 33 times that of the Hiroshima atomic bomb. Even still, almost 1,500 people were injured, and more than 7,000 buildings were damaged, none died. If the event in 2013 taught us one thing, it's that despite all of our technological advancements over the past 100 years, we're still realistically helpless in such an event. The Chelyabinsk meteor was able to enter the Earth's atmosphere without detection due to its path relative to the sun in the background. It took people by complete surprise, just as the Tunguska meteor had more than 100 years prior. Lucky for all of us, these events are simply very rare. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more content like this, as well as other topics related to real life horror. You can hit the bell icon to get notifications whenever I release a new video. Thanks for watching. Until next time.